This is going to be a short video, uh, an overview of the e-commerce system that we use so that you can familiarize yourself with uh, the setup and configuration of the shopping cart, although that will probably already have been configured for you. Um, at least this way you will know what to do and where to go to to change some of the settings. The first thing you'll need to do is go into your shopping carts administration area. If you don't already have a login, then just ask and we can set one up for you. And you just go in and log in. And then go to Components, eShop. And you'll see we have uh, the dashboard for the shop. Obviously at the moment uh, there's no sales or anything because this is just a clean install that we've done. And if you hover over the system menu and click configuration, you'll see the first one is general and you just put the details in for the shop here. So you'll put the shop name, uh, address and some other information. And down at the bottom, just a, a couple of options available um, for debug if the shop's causing problems and we need to look at the code. On the next tab, we have locale. Uh, this will normally be set up for you, but you can do this. There's also an option to automatically convert the currency, but most shops have a set currency. And then uh, the units that are going to be used. In this case, it's metric. The options page is probably the most detailed one. This will already be set for you, but at least uh, if you can be familiar with it and some changes need to be made, um, you can just go into this page and make those changes. I think the most uh, important one is the products uh, configuration. So I set the product SKU validation to yes, which means each individual product has to have an individual product code. And we have a category product count so that we know how many products are in the categories. And as you can see, as you walk through, there's different options available um, for each individual product. Uh, don't allow people, for example, to add products to the wish list or the compare list, but in some cases you might want to do that. So if you want to individually customize how a product is presented on the website, this is where you would go. Typically, we don't configure taxes, but they can be configured for you. We can even configure taxes to different geographic locations. So, for example, if somebody is ordering products from Spain to the United Kingdom or to the States, we can set different tax uh, amounts. And you'll see here we have various references to the privacy policy in terms. This is a document we create for you. As a suggestion, um, familiarize yourself with this page, but don't make any changes unless you think they are necessary because we will already have configured this for you. The image page is just a setup of the individual images. So how the image looks when it's a thumbnail, when it's in a category, when somebody clicks on it, um, if it's in a gallery, etc. And there's also the opportunity to brand the images as well with your own logo at the bottom. One little tip about this. If you do watermark images and set the option to recreate the watermark images, don't have this on permanently because it will slow the website down significantly. It should only need to be run once when the watermark changes. The layout is just really the overview of the layout, how you want to present it. In most cases, the default layout that we use is perfectly fine um, for most shops. We display in grid rather than list because it presents more products on the page. The invoice setting is just there to make sure that each customer gets an invoice when an invoice is produced. 
and all the other settings we really don't touch. That's pretty much it for the uh, configuration overview, but you'll see there are other options here like countries, currencies, which I'll go into. Uh, we have the euro set as the default. We don't actually use uh, pound sterling or dollar, so I'm going to unpublish those. And you'll see that euro is set as the default as well. We also don't use stock statuses. We just set all the products to, I think, 9,999 items so that uh, they will never run out of stock. But of course, if you want to run uh, an inventory system, you can do as well. Order statuses we don't change, the standard settings are fine for that. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want taxes, we can actually add tax rates for you. That isn't a problem. The only other two elements that we configure are uh, the payments and the shipping. So I'm going to go into payments here first and show you that. So we have uh, PayPal, which we're going to disable. We don't like using PayPal because it's, uh, we've had cases where clients have claimed money back even after receiving an order. Uh, we have offline, which means basically cash in hand or cash on arrival. And we have a Stripe checkout, which we call pay securely online. And that processes all our online payments. Probably one of the better processes in the world. We've been using them for quite some years. And then we have uh, shipping options. Normally, we only have two options available. I'm just going to disable the other ones. And free should be available as well. So you can see now that we only have uh, two shipping options available. Shipping price and free shipping. Free shipping, we will configure and say that the minimum total for an order uh, to receive free shipping has to be 10 or 10 euros and we'll put that to yes so that people can select it as an option and price so the package fee is going to be 20 we're going to set that to 10 so it's 10 euros to use this so if somebody's making a purchase on the shop and they purchase more than 10 euros worth of goods, they will automatically be able to select um, free shipping. If it's under 10 euros, then they will be charged. And that's pretty much it for the configuration. Um, next, we're going to go into categories and products and how to add those.